On the back, if you look at it really close, especially, it's hard to see with your naked eye, but with a little magnifying lens, if you look on the back and it looks just kind of dirty like that, all of those little spots are these little mites, little spider mites. So they're there. Um, the best way to get rid, the, the first line of defense of what I use for spider mites and aphids is just to go in with a strong spray of water on the underside of the leaf. Spider mites, in fact, they like it hot and dry. So when they're, um, if you go in there and you, you know, rinse off those leaves and make them wet, they're not going to like that wet environment. I had spider mites in my garden uh, early this spring and I didn't treat them soon enough and they have just spread. I already had to pull up beans because the spider mites just, they just took over so fast. So as soon as you see those telltale signs, that kind of stippling, um, that means they're sucking on the leaf and sucking out that chlorophyll. So um, go in and look on the underside of the leaf and you'll probably see, uh, you'll be able to see that it just looks kind of dirty. So if it gets really bad, you'll see webbing. And eventually, my beans that I pulled up were, were practically bleached. You know, they had hardly no color left. So be sure that you um, treat those because they do, uh, they can get out of hand pretty fast. This is a, a uh, egg, cluster of eggs from a particular uh, insect. Does anybody know what it is? This is how they look every time that these little barrel-shaped eggs you can see that they're tiny and they're always laid in the cluster of 12. And it's a very common pest in the fall. It's the harlequin bug. So these little, these little insects come out of the top of those barrels and then they go through different um, stages and then eventually they'll turn into that guy. So if the harlequin bugs are kind of a pain in a fall garden, that orange and black bug, uh, but they can't swim. So that's one way that you can get rid of them. Uh, some people just I don't know. I'm not a squisher, but uh, <laughs> this is Bill Adams again with his bare hands. Uh, another thing that I found that I think is kind of a good idea. Have y'all seen these? It's called a bug zapper, and they have them at Freight Harbor. And I got, Bruce bought these the first time they were something like 7 or $8, wasn't it? Were these expensive when you first bought yeah. them? But they were, the last time we, sometimes we see, we go there and they have a bunch of them and sometimes they just have a few. Uh, if they have a bunch, they're usually selling them for like $3.99. <laughs> if they only have a few, it seems like they're selling them for like $8 or $9. But anyway, they take 2D batteries, they have a little button on the side and you just press that. Sir, can I see your hand? <laughs> <laughs> and you get a little so it works. I mean, what I do, if I see these, I'll tell you, some of these bugs, if you go and disturb them, they always drop down. So I just, you know, put this, push the button and put it underneath, and then I kind of, you know, shake the plant, and then the bugs will <laughs> drop down, and they just kind of, you know, that big leaf-footed bug that you saw, I did, I got one of those the other day, I mean, I just swatted it, and it just, it kind of did like that, it fell down to the ground, and then it flew off. So, <laughs> guess it just depends. Not like he would have done. Them? I'm sorry? Where did you say you found them? At uh, Freight Harbor Tools. Freight Harbor. Uh, Harbor. I'm sorry, Harbor, Harbor Freight, Freight Tools. Tools. Yeah. yeah. So it's just something, you know, a little something different to add to your arsenal. Um, caterpillars, of course, are going to be a really, they're going to be a problem. In the fall, that's that's kind of goes with the territory. If you see these holes, if you you know you're gonna you know that there's caterpillars there. Turn on the back side of the leaf. That's where you're gonna find them. And then you can either squish them, or you can use Bt Bacillus thuringiensis. If you're gonna squish them, uh, it's much easier when they're really small. You know, they don't they don't start. They don't come into the world that size. They come in as just a little tiny thing you can hardly even see and you don't feel bad squishing them when they're just so tiny. They look like a little vein in the leaf. So that's what I mean, be a little plant detective and uh, keep on top of this. Get to know who the good guys are in your vegetable garden. As, as Skip Richter says, he was our county agent in Austin for, a, uh, for several years and he said if you kill them, then you inherit their job. So these guys go around doing a lot of dirty work in the garden for you. And you know, there's enough dirty work to do in the garden. You don't need to make more for yourself. So that's another benefit of uh, you know, gardening naturally and organically is just to encourage the population of beneficial insects. And by the way, I forgot to tell y'all, but when I have grown potatoes, you know, when you grow potatoes and um, 
You put in that seed potato and then you pull up the soil. As the potato grows, you keep pulling the soil up around the stem because the potatoes grow out from the stem. So I use soil and I also use just, you know, my uh, compost and mulch like leaves. And then over those potatoes are sitting there in the garden for maybe three to four months. And uh, when I go out and harvest my potatoes, there's always earthworms in there because of all that organic matter that I had. And so, uh, the, you know, you've got good guys in the soil and you've got good guys, you know, out in the garden doing, uh, helping you out. Thank goodness, because otherwise it'd be really hard. It's hard enough sometimes. Um, here we go with some more aphids. Y'all know what that is? Lady beetle. Oh yeah, y'all are such good, smart gardeners. That's a ladybug larva. There, there it is, just uh, munching down on a little aphid. But if you see those guys in the garden, I think, you know, to some people they look kind of scary, but they're not. They're just a ladybug, lar ladybug larva. And here's the life cycle of a ladybug. So you've got the two ladybugs. These are the eggs, this little cluster of these golden yellow eggs. They're usually, they're often found, this is, um, I think this was a deal. Like on dill or fennel, you might find them laid on, uh, on the tips, and then here is that ladybug larva, and then the ladybug pupa, and then you've got a ladybug again. So get, you know, get. It's good to know those different stages. And then they say if it, if it's one, it's a good guy. This is an assassin bug. Looks kind of like those that leaf-footed bug nymph, but look at its hind legs are really straight and skinny, no flat hind leg. So they say if there's one, it's a good guy, and if there's a hundred, it's a bad guy. So these little, these are the leaf-footed bug nymphs, and they come in clusters. You know, there's usually a bunch of them, and you know, lots of times they're clustered around your tomatoes. So anyway, these, that bug zapper, will do a number on those <laughs> to the point of no return. Be visible in your garden. The best form of pest control is your own shadow. So that just means that you need to be out in your garden on a regular basis, you know, in, um, inspecting your plants. You know, look under the leaves. That's where you're going to find a lot of stuff. You know, look in the soil. And just be aware of what's going on out there. And you don't, you know, don't sit your garden out in the in the back 40. It needs to be close to the house. It needs to be where you're going to, you know, be in it and spend time in it. Be observant. Uh, I was out in my garden. This has been a few years ago, but I found these little, look like little green hand grenades. They're about, they were about this big, so not that big, but I kind of wondered, what, what is this? So then I looked down and around, and then I looked up, and there they were in the, in the stem of a tomato plant. And so then I found the culprit. Can you see it in there? There's a tomato hornworm. He's right there. Can hardly see. I tell you, I jumped 10 feet when I saw it. <laughs> kind of surprised me. There it is, up close and personal. Yeah, so if you see those, don't panic. I hear, I was listening to the radio this morning and I heard like four people calling and saying, I found this insect, it's as big as my index finger. You know, it's a big a caterpillar, what do I do? Well, just throw it in your neighbor's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 don't need, you don't need to pull out any kind of pesticide or anything like that. Okay. You're, Lots of ways to deal with that. I did hear one lady said she just gets her scissors. Okay, I'm not going to hear, but anyway, Bruce thinks it would taste better if it were grilled. <laughs> so, and just to take your mind off of that, um, grilled okra, in case you're growing okra in your, in your spring garden now, uh, whenever you're harvesting, try doing some grilled okra. It's really good. You just toss it in olive oil, salt and pepper, throw it on the grill for about 10 or 15 minutes, and it just, it's not slimy. Give it a little char, and it's just really good. Really good way to eat okra, and very easy. And by the my way, since we're talking about... Two. Check my check, one, two. <laughs> Test my check, my testing, one, two. I guess that means I'm supposed to be finishing up. I've got like five more slides. Um, be sure that you word smart. We're talking about starting a garden in like July or August when it's really hot outside. This is something I like to do is just take some washcloths that are wet, put them in the, in the little cooler with some ice, and put them in the freezer the night before. And then take them out to the garden with you. Check my check. And make sure you've got sunscreen, sunglasses, water, and then when, once you, you know, take 
stretch breaks every once in a while. You know, be good to yourself when you're in the garden. Take that washcloth out and give yourself a little face bath. Um, take time to relax. It is a lot of work to, you know, to have a vegetable garden. And I have a really big one, so I, you know, it, it does take me a lot more time, but that's what I do. But do take time to kind of sit back and relax in the garden. Count your blessings. Pause for a second. Texans read that. Check my well, check. Testing one. Company barbecue. This is their motto. Testing one, two. Give some serious yeah, thought. Yeah, this is all Thank you. Your lucky stars. Your check my check. And eat Just your vegetables every day. <laughs> so that is it. I'm just.